Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Cloud Whisperers. I'm David Broussard. And I am Brian Cheatham. Back. I'm back in it. Back again. And, and for those of you that actually watched that dance-off competition we were having at the beginning, right, then you are loyal, the four loyal watchers of The Cloud Whisperers, okay? Because I most, most people probably got this fed up in their YouTube feed and just went, oh, no, I'm out of there. No, I don't want to see a, a <laughs> white boy trying to dance. That just does not work for me at all. Just bouncing, man. I was just bouncing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we'll say. Which I was just bouncing, yeah. Uh, well, Brian, it has been a while, but I would like to know, what have you been up to lately? Man, I, I, I guess... Did we talk in October? I, mean, I think well, we, maybe we, we did. We did. We, we, we had an episode... And yeah. uh, um, with uh, Jen Kaland, which was fascinating, you know, Life, the Universe, and Cloud Whispers, right? Which we heard a little bit about Jen's fascinating story uh, of, uh, you know, getting into tech and uh, becoming, yeah. a, you know, getting married, uh, moving to England, being, having oh, difficulty wow. finding, finding a job um, over yeah. in England. Uh, and then, um, and then. Uh, afterwards, you know how she went through Tech Up Women, and uh, and now is a is a cloud architect for one of the biggest uh, Google Space cloud providers in uh, in England, which nice. is absolutely fascinating yeah. to me. And and did this while 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 raising a couple of kids with uh, you know one with special needs and one who um, had a, a very rare cancer uh, that she had to deal with. So to, to just, amazing, these high one. achievers, man. Having these high achievers, man. I mean, it's kind make, of a makes you. <laughs> It's just a little, embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> a little embarrassing, like, oh, wow, we really uh, we really are, are, are lazing up just by, you know, hosting a, a podcast uh, and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, and well, now we have that, eight, that, eight listeners, right? <laughs> uh, no, I think we're up to four. We had three and then Jen, Jen, Jen brought in one more listener. So now we're up to four, four, four people. Awesome. So well, I need to go back uh, and listen to it. So my apologies, Jen. I will uh, listen to it and, you know, I'll report back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. So uh uh October for me is uh ban what we call Bantober. I guess you call it Bantober, you know, if you're a parent mm -hmm. that has a child that's in the high school band, um, then that's competition season. So it's not mm -hmm. only is it football that you have on Friday nights or Saturday nights sometimes. I guess they do football on their Saturday night lights yeah. now too. I didn't know that. Um well they do yeah, it Thursday so as well. I mean, yeah. Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, depending upon will, how many teams have to use the same stadium, right? They, yeah, they will do any 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 day of the week they have to because it's Texas and it's yeah. football, right? Um, yeah. So, well, uh, I mean, you I, know, I, what I, what else what else are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Well, so in October, <laughs> I had two. Let's see, three actually three days, three days where I was up twenty four hours straight. So oh, wow. take take him to the school. Um, mm -hmm. to drop him off so he can ride the buses with the kids, you know, to Katy, Texas or Round Rock, Texas or whatever. It's two hours to get to Round Rock from here, by the way. So um, by the yeah, time you, the you add up all that travel time and all that, you know, and mm -hmm. then I'm following them around where I could see the performance. I can't ride the bus with them. So I yeah. drive up, watch the performance, come all the way back and pick him up afterwards. And it ends up being, you know, 24 hours. Uh, so I did three of those days in October. Mm. Um, and he just went to what they call Grand Nationals, Grand Nats is what they call it. Mm -hmm. Band, Bands of America is a tremendous organization. I've, 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 I've said a lot of things about band and how much I have a newfound respect for it and all that. But organizations like Bands of America and, 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 and the like, it's just amazing. I mean, amazing uh, the way that they put on the, the, the band show. Um, the way that they gather all the kids at the end, they look, it's like an hourglass of, of kids pouring into the stadium and they're all different colors. Right. And at the very end, they say break ranks. Right. So they're all lined up and they break ranks. It's just so many cool experiences, man. Um, but I'm glad that it's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, until next year. Yeah. It's just like, what, what, um, what, what grade is your son? In I don't again? know. He's a freshman. Yeah. So he's yeah, got, so you got three you more, got, you, got, you got three more years, more years of this and then maybe, and maybe college. I'm going to sleep like the entire month of, uh, 
of September. I'm just gonna sleep all of September next year. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that, that's start a good idea. Stuff. Just just start <laughs> start getting set up on that. That that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, no, it's, that, it's, that, that is nice. Yeah, it's it's been a very good experience, man. Very good experience. So, how are you, David? What have you been up to? With your son doing uh, band competitions, my son, uh, you know, in his 12th, 13th year, I guess, of of from kindergarten through 12th grade, has for the very first time uh, started to engage in a school competition, right? Now, uh, we, you know, just all these years, nope, 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 no sports, no this, no that, nope. But he has gotten involved in his uh, robotics team. At school. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, and it's fascinating because here's this guy who has, you know, come home as soon as he can get, get home, stop thinking about school. And the oh. next thing you know, we're saying he wants to stay, you know, because normally yeah. he's a, he gets out after fifth period. So at like 110, he's free, right? No, he wants to stay until four o'clock, like today. No, don't come get me. I'm going to stay all afternoon and I'm going to work on robotics. Uh, that and is help so cool, man. And stuff like that. So it's been really neat to see him get excited about something. And they had their first competition this last weekend. Um, and, you know, as, as with all of those kinds of things, uh, you know, it, it's a challenge right there. They're, they're working, they're going through a company called first F I R S T or a group, I should say. And okay. they're doing, technically they're doing the technical challenge as opposed to the robotics competition, but it's similar. You, you, you still have to build a robot, um, that then solves problems uh, and goes through that stuff and things like that. So it's pretty cool. And and he and he's in, he really enjoyed himself. Uh, but most of his stuff is done before, well before the competition. He was there all day on Saturday. But you know, he just he's just there cheering him on because you know he's a builder, right? Not a driver. Yeah. And uh, although one of the arms fell off the robot, <laughs> it's like, well, did you fix it? And he's like. No, <laughs> Why did, we couldn't fix it. We know you got to have, got to have all kinds of tools and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, well, there you go. Maybe you should bring those along next time. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that probably would be impossible, but uh, you know, but yeah, it was, it was really cool to be able to sit there and, uh, and, and, and see him be excited about something and, and get into it and making some new friends, which is also yeah. awesome uh, for, for someone who is autistic, making friends can be a difficult situation. So uh, quite proud of him at this point. Yeah, and that's a it's such a cool experience as a parent, right? To to see your mm -hmm. child find something that they like, you know that that to yeah. me is like there's that just that just fills your cup, man. Every time, you know, yeah. it's just, I, oh, I love it, that. I I I agree with you 100. percent It is uh yeah. It is really awesome. So yeah. Well, today, uh, actually, I was I thought I was going to zoom us in here so we can get a. You know, see, <laughs> see a little bit better of our of our of our see, faces. Although you don't although see you the don't two hairs the cool, on my head, the two hairs on your head, you don't get all <laughs> of the full glory of my cloud whisperer's background. But that's okay. Um, so today, Brian, we are going to talk about uh, Apple Business Manager. And so, yes. uh, you know, I think what, what I'll start with is why don't you kind of explain what the heck Apple Business Manager is. Um, uh, yeah, and especially as it relates to the Microsoft clouds, which is what we primarily focus on. Yeah, absolutely. So business manager, you know, Apple business manager itself is basically it's, it's a portal. It's an admin portal, mm -hmm. um, that administrators can use to deploy iPhones, iPads, um, Apple TV, Macs. Um, you can mm -hmm. really do a lot of different things with it. Right. So that's just the Apple portion of it. That's the, that's just the bite of the apple, right? Uh, that's just the apple side of it. Um, <laughs> but I can use Apple Business Manager to, you know, push applications. So like an app from the App Store, like so what you would go on your Apple device and go to your, you know, Apple Store or whatever, or the App Store, you can actually push those apps uh, from Apple Business Manager. The key hmm. is you've got to get that device registered into Apple Business Manager and, um, it's pretty easy to do that if you get a Apple Business Manager account set up. You can order through the Apple Business Store. Um, as okay. long as you order through the Business Store, they can associate it with the same uh, account that you set up, Business Manager account. So say I buy 10 iPads, I can buy 10 right. iPads, and they would automatically show up in that web portal. And I can control okay. certain things with that. So I can control certain things. I can do certain things with the you know, policies and different things like that. I can uh, push apps 
to it. Um, I can wipe the device, right? So I can, I can okay. do all that stuff via Apple Business Manager. So that's just the Apple side of it. So where it becomes really interesting is when we take and we plug in uh, Apple Business Manager into Intune. So, or we plug into an Apple business manager, I guess. And, and that, at that point, we have a, a way to manage uh, devices from Intune. Um, okay. And, and the, the benefit of, of using Apple business managers, you, you think, think about the administration of, of deploying 10 iPads, right? And we want to say we want to put Outlook on the device, just Outlook, just the Outlook app itself. Sure. Um, sure. So we have to, you know, if we did that manually, how much time would that take us on 10, 10 iPads? It would probably take a good amount of time, right? Because you got to, yeah. What do you got to do? You got to boot up the device, right? You mm -hmm. got to get to a point to where you put in an Apple ID, right? So you got to create an Apple ID, right? If you don't have Apple yeah. Business Manager into, and you're creating an Apple ID, and a unique mm. Apple ID for that matter for each of the iPads. So now I've got okay. all this extra admi administrative. Uh, overhead where when I plug into Apple Business Manager, I can use a concept called managed IDs. And what okay. that basically does is it allows me to use my Microsoft 365 credential as my Apple ID. Oh, okay. So now I have the ability to, I don't, I don't all the, all the user has to do when I ship them the device is sign into the device that first time they're using a managed ID. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm sitting reason. there thinking to myself, I'm thinking of thinking to myself right now is that, yeah. you know, I'm the only non Apple user in my house. Okay. Oh, everybody else, everybody else has got iPhones. Uh, yeah. We've had iPads in the past. Right. And so I, I'm sitting here chuckling because I'm thinking to myself just how much of a pain in the tuchus <laughs> managing Apple IDs for the yeah. family is. Oh yeah. And trying to get us to where, you know, we, we've, you know, we're, we're sharing the same iCloud kind of thing. Yep. Cause I'm paying extra for some iCloud cause we were trying to back up my daughter's phone and I got to stop paying for that. You know, there's all these different things that we're doing, right. That, that Apple's perfectly fine with us doing that. They don't, they, yeah. you don't have to buy, you don't have to buy the same app 10 times. You know, you just, you just buy it once for the family and share it. I'm like, okay, great. But oh my gosh, is it a mess? And then I was just yeah. thinking, what if I had, you know, 300 people in my company oh yeah or 3,000 people in my company and i had to suddenly figure out how to link all of those apple ids or they have to go out and create apple ids and then link yep. them into this and i was sitting there going i i would simply say we're going to be android <laughs> so that's what we're going to do we're going to yeah. be android and i'm not going to worry about this because by or i'm going to make every I'd say original yeah. every, one Windows phone, but we don't have that anymore. Um, so I'm going to be, we're going to be Android because I don't want to mess with that ever again. But you're telling me that instead I could use Apple Business Manager. And now what I can do is I can use the, the standard, um, you know, account for my business. Right. Right. And yeah, you're log in david at cloudwhispers.net and that would become my apple id that becomes the way that we're centrally managing it and you've got a portal to go manage it from as well yeah that's exactly it and so the the business manager piece really the only the only reason you need business manager once you plug in intune is mm -hmm. to purchase the apps so as the company you purchase okay. an app um mm -hmm. or you know the microsoft apps you know you don't they don't cost you anything, but you still got to right. go through the process of, of at least downloading the app, right? Or going into the app store and saying, hey, I want to grab this app and I want to download and install it. So we do all that in Business Manager, right? And then mm -hmm. it actually links into Intune and it it pulls up and shows us that we have those apps that we can deploy to the, uh, the different iPads that we have or the iPhones or whatever, right? So I can then take and push those apps, all the Microsoft apps, right, down to and configure them for that matter, right? So think about not just pushing them down, but having a profile that we can configure on a for for an Outlook, you know, uh, for OneDrive and all of that. So yeah, we're, we're taking we're taking a lot of that stuff that the user has to do manually, and we're automating it for them. Um, so they they the the company the customer will buy an iPad in this case, right? And they're going to buy, mm -hmm. buy it through the Apple Business store, right? They buy right. through the business store uh, or the business department at the Apple store is really the way to say that. 
and that gets okay. shipped to the user. And then on the back end, I just say, hey, that's going to go to so-and-so. That user okay. is the only one that can log into that Apple device at that point. They use their, wow. um, you know, their vanity domain, the, the customer, whatever their email address is, right? They sign sure, into it. Sure. And then it configures everything. So policies, any kind of policy that I want to configure, like say I want to require a pin, right? I want to... Um, and we have certain things that we follow from an Intune perspective that say, hey, this is the recommended security to have basic security on this device. And then we have all the policies that push down and then the apps get installed and the apps just show up. They just show up on the device. And then, you know, no sooner than I set this up for a, cu a, a customer recently, um, right. they, had to go through some, they had to go through some layoffs, unfortunately. Um, and there were probably four of those people that had iPads. And I asked hmm. him, I was like, hey, you know, we, you know, and I know this is unfortunate, you know, what you guys are going through right now, but we can go in and wipe that device remotely. So literally within 10 seconds of the click in the Intune portal, I'm wiping an iPad device that's company owned. Um, oh, that's and that, at that point, that, we that's have pretty impressive. Data. Now, that's what we now, call can you... managed. Yeah, quick. Sure. No, I, yeah, I, I think that, that makes sense. So that's if I go buy it from the business department at the Apple store, right? Correct. But yep. could you, what, what if I've already, what if as a company I've already bought, you know, a hundred iPads or iPhones, I assume we can do this with iPhones as well as iPads, right? Um, yeah. But what if, what, what if we are, what if we already own a bunch of these things and I want to, I want to start putting them into the portal and using them. Can I convert something over that way or not? Yeah. So the, usually in that scenario, what I ran into this time around was, um, mm -hmm. And it's a really cool app, man. You download this app called Apple Configurator, and you okay. put it on your iPhone. You put it on the iPhone or wherever, and you sign in to the. <laughs> I know you. I love <laughs> Configurator. Configurator. Uh, yep. You, yep. you sign in to the the, you know, the app, and mm -hmm. it basically, when you start up the iPad, you can start up the iPad, and when it gets to a certain screen, you know mm -hmm. what we call the the UB experience in Windows, right? It gets to a certain screen on the iPad. Um, like the first or second screen when you first power it up, you can move that configurator app right in front of the iPad as long as it's on the same network, wireless network. It okay. says, "Hey, I see a device in 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 you know it's in in my view, right?" Um, and you mm -hmm. basically it's like you're scanning this this crazy 3D looking barcode, man. It looks like a little globe or whatever. It just sits there and rotates or whatever. You scan it hmm. and it will import the iPad that you've already purchased in. Oh, so, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you just basically yeah. do that from the Apple configurator. And there, okay. there are some ways, depending on how you buy the Apple device, um, you can get Apple to make that transfer for you, for you, right. but it's almost more trouble than it's worth. So what Apple yeah. tells you is you need to buy this through the business store or whatever, and make sure that it's associated with this account that will basically import it into Apple business manager. So, um, but yeah, the conv yeah, that's what see, I did in this case. If it was anybody other than Apple, they would just just, just scan a QR code, right? Because that's yeah. what everybody else does. But Apple's I was thinking when we little, when we yeah. when we had to buy my my daughter a new iPhone 15. Oh when yeah, we got her because yeah. she she wanted to buy she wanted to buy the watch, right? So we got her the watch and then discovered it wouldn't hook up to her iPhone X. So we had to we had to upgrade her to an iPhone 15. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the whole configuration is it does it it shows this like swirly yep. pattern. That's it. We're getting sleepy, yeah. Brian. Um, <laughs> give us all of your money. <laughs> um, but yeah, they um, and I, 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 I guess all it really is is it's a mobile QR code essentially, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's kind of what kind of what it's doing. effectively. Yeah, it's it, yeah. When I first saw it, I was like, what, what, I'm supposed to scan what? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah. So I mean, it's. For, for that scenario, they had 20 iPads. Yeah, it was 20, 20 iPads and they had already purchased them. So he purchased all the iPads and I was like, hey, you know what? We probably ought to set these up as managed devices. So in sure. Intune, we have a mobile device management, which is a device, to, is a wrapper that goes around the device, right? So I can control mm -hmm. pin, I control all those things on the device. Um, and that, that's what we set up for them, right? So now I've got complete yeah. control over that iPad. I can, I can power it off. I can connect to it remotely. I can put a team viewer on it to where I can see the person's screen for troubleshooting purposes and all that. So there's a lot of stuff yeah. you can do once you get it in a managed scenario. Um, but yeah, re yeah, really, really cool stuff. And it, you know, it just one of those examples that we put that in for a customer and 
they got immediate value out of it. And then unfortunately during was, their layoffs or whatever, we got value out of it as well because, you know, we needed to wipe some of the devices. Um, now, are which there, is you know, are fortunate, there any, but it's still, it's something that happens, you know, it's still. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there any licensing requirements for that? What, what licenses do you have to have to be able to take advantage of Apple business manager? Yeah. So on the Apple side of things, uh, you've got to go through the process of setting up the Apple business manager account. Um, and that's going to be like a, do you need your Dunn's number and all kinds of stuff? Because ultimately mm -hmm. you're going to eventually be buying stuff from Apple. Right. So they want you, okay. they want you to prove who that your company is actually a legitimate company. Right. So you go through okay. kind of a process there. So on the Apple business manager side of things, that's probably the most complicated part about it. Um, okay. Just because it takes like five days, you know, like business days mm. for, to do something like that. Um, that's pretty fast, and, actually, yeah, if you think a, about it. Well, yeah, absolutely. And if you think, think about like getting set up as a Microsoft partner, right, you got to go through and validate your company and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So the only license requirement you really have is you, you have to have an Intune license. So, um, or, okay. you know, a, a SKU, a Microsoft SKU that includes that. So that includes in Intune, this case, yeah. yeah, in this case, it was Microsoft uh, 365 Business Premium. Um, that was the right. license that we were using. Um, okay. but you know, and you have to, yeah. you're supposed to have one of those for every user yeah. that's going to have a managed device, right? Every user that has a managed device. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that, that, that makes a certain amount of sense. And so, cause you're paying Microsoft for that ability to manage those right. devices. And so remote wipe, you know, um, as you said, being able to install team viewer and being able to see what their screen is so you can do remote support, all yeah. those wonderful things that are great. Um, what about, uh, and then I assume app management as well, right? You're able to do app management yep. through it. Okay. Yep. You can do app management um, as well. Yep. And then, and then it, and then you, and then for ev everything else, I mean, you have Intune. So if it's conditional access, if I'm, if I'm doing anything like that, I'm, I'm using Intune for all of that, or, um, is that also happening through Apple business manager? Yeah. So the, the authentication process, right. Happens all through Azure AD, right. Or Microsoft okay. Entra, whatever sense. they're calling it now. Um, so that still happens there. And is it, is it Entra access. or Entra? Intra, Entra. In Let's intra, call the whole entra. thing off. Yeah. I, I, I still, it's, it's I still, for, it's I still, forefront, forefront identity, uh, forefront active directory. Oh, never mind. Oh, 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 did, did they name, yeah. did they name like four, they put forefront in front of everything back like, 10 years ago. For uh, well, they're, now they're putting purview in front of everything on the security side. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, no. yeah well, yeah. we still, and, and we, even remember, the we remember SkyDrive. Yeah. Remember SkyDrive? Oh my gosh, man. Yes. <laughs> I think we're we going to start dating ourselves now, man. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, so we've got that. We've got that ability to control things. So what about, so what are, you mentioned that you can actually set the pin number on the device from a central location. So you can, instead of people picking their own pin, you can tell them what, what the pin they have, or are you saying you can set that they have to have a pin and it has to be of a yeah. certain complexity? Okay. Yeah. So you, it's a, they have to use a pin to unlock that device, right? They can't turn okay. that off. And for most devices now you have to have that, you know, Mike, I don't mm -hmm. think um, Apple even lets you turn some of that stuff off anymore. Um, Right. It was back in the day when we powered up our laptops and it just came up into, you know, you didn't have to sign into it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you don't, you don't see that scenario much anymore. Um, sure. But yeah, that's exactly it. So, so Microsoft has a recommended set of security baselines uh, that okay. you can use um, and you set those security baselines. And one of the, one of those is to have a, you know, a, a pin required to unlock a device. Uh, yeah. And if the that's device cool. is, yeah. So there's all, all different, sorts of things. And if it's got set. biometrics, it'll, it'll use face ID or, or whatever, exactly. um, if yep. it can kind of thing. And you yeah, can actually make, say, Hey, sense. you know what I allow you to use, or you're required to use face ID. You oh, know? So you can, okay. you can do those sort of things too. But, but because it's a managed device, I can manage pretty much everything that the API has access to. Right. So everything that the Apple API will let me get access to on that device. And that's okay. a, a good amount of things. The, the big, big selling point for this though, is that managed mm -hmm. ID? That's the that's the secret sauce. Yeah. That's the magic, because now yeah. you don't have to manage. And actually, I can even hide the Apple ID section, so they don't even see what the Apple ID is. They they have no way to go in there and put in their own, right? They, you know, I can just hide yeah. it and lock it out. So, um, you know, locking it down that way. So it's you know just locking the business, locking it down for security purposes, and locking it down so people don't do something stupid, you know, and put their own Apple ID in. 
on a corporate device, right? So we can lock all that down. Yeah, That's cool. A, Love it. Yeah, I was I actually enjoyed that that little little project that I got to do. And I knew what the <laughs> stuff could do, right? I just I didn't know I'd never put my hands on it. You know, now that I have my hands on it, it was kind of cool to do something like yeah. that for, for someone. Yeah. And it was for a small customer, you know, they're they got 75 users and they had a, you know, a um because they're custom builder and they um had these iPads in the field that they're you know field techs were using. Um yeah. Yeah. And like hey, you know, we can uh, set I've these seen, up as seen, managed devices. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we see a lot of that kind of stuff happening, um, and yeah. and it's and and you know there there's BYOD where everybody brings their own thing, and then there's fully managed devices, and there different organizations have got different different requirements around that. I've worked with both, and uh, yeah. it's nice to know that you know managing these Apple devices becomes a significantly easier situation. And also, you know, from an employee standpoint, I don't have to worry about adding a device using my my Apple ID or having to manage a second Apple ID right. uh, and, and, and stuff like that. So it, it, it makes it easier yeah. on me as the employee as well. well Absolutely. That's cool. Well, Brian, we have come to that time of our episode. Once again, uh, it is time for us to talk about one last thing. And uh, you, uh, you, you, you suggested our topic for today. So I'm counting on you to really carry this discussion about <laughs> our, our one last thing today. Uh, and, and so you said that uh, we should talk about, uh, you know, we, we both live in the San Antonio area. And uh, if you live in the San Antonio area, you know that this is Spurs country, right? Uh, and uh, the Spurs were lucky enough to win the NBA lottery this last year and were able to draft this phenomenal physical specimen. <laughs> uh, and, and evidently, you know, you know, for the, for the third time in the last, what, 30 years. Um, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Cause well, a little bit more than 30 years. So we'll say 35 years for the third time yeah. in the last 35 years, the Spurs have managed to get a generational big man. You know, first it was David Robinson, um, who um, they they yep. got in, the uh, in was it, it was eighty it was eighty eight I think they drafted him it, but he didn't start playing until ninety yeah. yeah I think I think that's right um because it was they drafted him and then they drafted Willie Anderson and then they drafted Sean Elliott and he started playing he and Sean Elliott played together their first year uh, for the Spurs and then of course there was the you know then David Robinson gets hurt one time and uh, they they draft uh, Tim Duncan. Uh, and another generational talent, I mean, who is just an amazing, amazing player. And uh, now they have drafted somebody with the name of Vincent Wembiana, who we affectionately call Wemby. Wemby. Down, down in this, this down, down here, I guess. Uh, so, so tell me, Brian, what do you, what do you think of, of Wemby so far? Have you seen him? Have you been to a game and seen him play in person or just seen him on TV or what? So the first time that I saw that I heard about this, uh -huh. um, you know, I heard about this this guy, and, and they were saying he's seven foot four or five or whatever he is. Immediately became like mm -hmm. the tallest NBA player just by joining. But what I what was really interesting about him is the highlights that he had when he was in the French league. So he comes from yeah. he comes from I think he's from Paris, France, his, or his dad is. I, yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's correct. But but he he, I mean, he had his own highlight reel. And and when I say highlight reel, he was doing he was doing things that people have never done before, and and being the the size that he is, how tall he is, right? Um, mm -hmm. He he's so you know, graceful. He he can shoot and has a touch on the ball like like Steph Curry, and and yeah. and one of the things that I noticed the first time that I saw him is this was just this highlight was just unbelievable. I had to watch it like ten times. He shot a three pointer. Okay. It hit the rim and bounced up. He was able to catch the ball that he's his shot. He was able to yeah. catch the ball and dunk it. So wow. think about shooting a three point shot. It's hitting the rim and it's coming off and he just grabs it with one hand and slams it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I literally watched it like 10 times. So that was kind of my first introduction to him. And then um, when I found out he was going to the Spurs, I was like, Oh, that's really interesting. Um, and mm -hmm. he's seven, he's seven, four. Yeah. I think he's 230, 200, 200. Yeah. No, 230 pounds of wet. Yeah. 
Two well, ten. yeah, two, they, <laughs> they, they officially list him as 210. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself going, I wish I was 210. And I'm right. like 6'1", you know? <laughs> yeah. I know. It's like, I don't like, I'm trying, I'm doing the math in my head too. I'm like, I'm, I'm not yeah, and he's and he's, and he's 19 years old. Yeah, 19 years old. And immediately just, became the tallest player in the NBA. And he's got people like LeBron James saying, this guy's the real deal. And I tell you what, man, he's, I think he's going to, he's going to get into his groove. He's going to figure out, you know, how the NBA works and how he can play. I think he's going to have some trouble on the inside, um, uh, playing on the inside with bigger guys. I think he's going to get a beat up mm -hmm. a little bit because he needs to put some meat on or whatever. But sure. Man, he is so like, it's, it's amazing to me how well he moves, you know, for how big yeah. he is. Normally yeah. somebody that tall or whatever it's just on the court. They just seem a little awkward or whatever. This guy has just got the touch. Um, mm -hmm. He's got the moves in, in all of it, man. I mean, he, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what he can do for the Spurs, um, what yep. he can do in the league. And it seems just like a, it's like Tim Duncan, you know, it just seems like a, a great guy, you know? I mean, yeah. Um, in, when he does his interviews and all that, you know, he has good things to say about people or whatever. Um, yeah. He doesn't have a big ego or anything like that. i tell you what, man, he, he's, he's got a good chance to, to be, you know, a superstar, um, at, at his size and on all that too. Uh, it's just, it's kind of, it's hmm. very interesting. Um, well, but yeah, when I saw thing, the, when I saw the, you know, the, you know, his highlight reel or whatever from the French league, I was, if you haven't seen it yet, just go look it up and you'll understand what I'm know. talking about. Well, I've, I've seen a little bit of it. I, I will tell you, you know, I'm not a basketball fan. I never have been really. I mean, a little bit of college basketball when I was a kid. Dominique Wilkins was starring at the University of Georgia when I was in high school uh, or before that. I forget exactly when. Uh, but never, I did never, never big thing. But when, when I was in college, uh, we got a chance to, you know, start watching um, Willie Anderson and then David Robinson. And uh, uh, David Robinson just amazed me and still, yeah. just, he still does. He's just an amazing fellow, incredibly generous person, uh, yeah. incredibly nice person. And uh, I remember talking to, to Jay Howard one time at an event. He, Jay Howard was the guy who did the, he did the Spurs broadcast on the radio for years and years and years. Yeah, no. And he's one of the same. few people who do, one of the people who doesn't have a color commentator. He is his own color commentator, just amazing fellow. And, and he had mentioned how when Robinson was a rookie, he got a lot of calls, a lot of fouls called on him because the referees didn't think somebody that big could be that agile yeah. and could do the things that he was doing. And that, and that when, when you talked about that with, with Wimbiama, that that's what that reminded me of is that yeah. here's a guy who now that the league has seen a Robinson and has seen a Tim Duncan uh, and even, even a Shaq, even Shaq who I, uh, I, I kind of like Shaq now. I never liked him when we had to play yeah. him all the time, right? But, but you know, but he's got a cool Shaq personality. Was, yeah, yeah he, he's he's a pretty good guy. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, he's and he's from San Antonio. But man, he, I hated losing to him <laughs> whenever we had, yeah. whenever we'd lose yeah. to him, kind of thing. But, but uh, yeah, he, he really, you know, this this idea that here's a guy who's just so big and so smooth, and an ability to move around. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. And he's having. I mean, he's only seven games into the season. But he's, you know, 19.4 points per game. Um, yeah. He's doing like 8.4 rebounds a game. Uh, he's, you know, he's got, you know, he's getting some assists. He's, he's, the the blocks were were crazy. I, I, I tried to pull up the blocks. Here. Let me see what happened to them. Where's his blocks? He's 2.6 blocks a game, which is amazing as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, this, and, and this is as a rookie, right? And yeah. I'm just kind of going, you know, this, this, this is pretty cool. Um, I, I think hopefully we're going to have many, many years watching him go yeah. forth and, and hopefully bring some championships back to us, uh, with the Spurs. We could certainly use some, some fun in that regard again. For sure. Yeah. Well, that'll bring us to the end of this episode 
of the Cloud Whispers. And I want to thank our our three or now four uh, people who are actually watching our podcast or listening to our podcast uh, on various services. We've had the ticker going all across the bottom, so there's no excuse not to know that you can go to Apple, you can go to Google, you can go to Spotify, you can go to um, uh, SoundCloud, uh, and you can also, of course, go to YouTube. Just search for the Cloud Whispers on your favorite podcasting um, uh, channel or in Bing. Uh, you know, obviously, if you go to Bing and just search for the Cloud Whispers, you'll find us. And you know, yep. hey, um, you, you may even discover that we actually have a website now. It is. It's. <laughs> we're we're kind of doing a we're kind of doing a soft launch of uh, of this, right? Um, you know, just just uh, cloudwhispers.net is out there. I'm trying to put show notes up over there, so we'll have a good place where the, the you can go there and find the shows and and get everything from that as well. And we'll be doing other blog posts out there in the future as well. But uh, you know, from from us to you, uh, just you know, just we we love to have you guys. We would love to see you guys. Uh, there's a contact us form out there, by the way, so you can actually get in oh, contact. Oh, via the with website. Us. No, I know via the website. And um, and I've set up uh, some email aliases, right? So you can actually email David at cloudwhispers.net. Um, and Brian, I'm going to get you set up whenever you tell me where you want it to f- go to and, or how we're, how we're going <laughs> to, I'm not sure how we're going to get that done because I got to figure that one out because, um, um, you know, anyway, but but but, but it, it, it's cool. We can figure it out. Yeah, yeah, we will. I mean, hey, if we can't figure it out, who can, right? Yeah, right. Of course, exactly. Of course, I, mean, I, that's- I will admit that. I am trying to do this on a shoestring budget, right? So, uh, <laughs> so as opposed to uh, you know actually doing it the right way, which would be setting up a whole cloud whispers tenant and stuff like that, I'm just piggybacking on top of my tenant yeah. uh, kind of thing. So, but nonetheless, uh, Brian, it has been a pleasure. I'm looking forward to yes. uh, seeing uh, pe- the, the 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 feedback we get from this episode, and looking forward to our next episode as well. Absolutely get some guests on here or whatever and get some real excitement going. Right. All righty. Well, you take care, everybody. Take care.